Hello everyone, welcome to another Game Talk, E3 edition. E3 extravaganza, we're e- still going. We're still going, <sighs> days or maybe one day later, we're still going. We've already talked about Nintendo so far, but now we're going to talk about the press conferences hosted by your boys at Microsoft and mm-hmm. your boys at Sony. Microsoft, Sony. That is why those are there. Yep. Because that's I have an Xbox, Keith has a PS4. That's right. But together, we, we have opinions on both of them. Together we make one whole console gamer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so what, you want to start with the Xbox? They went first in the yeah. lineup. Makes sense. I still have this guy. Oh yeah, Judd's wanna, still here okay, from we'll, last time. We'll we leave him, him up there. We'll, yeah. we'll leave Judd. He'll let us know. know how we're doing in the game. I don't know Judd, but we'll leave him. Yeah, he's a Splatoon dude. He judges okay. uh, who wins, basically. Gotcha. He throws up a flag on either side, depending on who wins. Gotcha. He's cool. Your phone's down there. Did you mean to put it on the floor? Yes, I okay. intended to put it on the floor because I'm afraid that sometimes it distorts the audio. And we don't want that. And we don't want that. Yeah. Don't want people to... We don't want any of our millions of adoring <sighs> fans... Um, being turned away. We wouldn't do that to the people. Wouldn't do it. Wouldn't do it. Except for in fir- their first episode of Dungeon Boys, which definitely did it. Yeah, that was pretty But I left, a, I left a comment. <laughs> um, right. So, Xbox. They introduced a ton of games. They did. It was a lot. Mm-hmm. And one... Oh, sorry. You Please. One thing that uh, a lot of people said they won E3, and I would say that, but most of those games that they showed you can play on a PS4. Mm-hmm. And it got kind of cringy because they kept... They did this last year, too. Well, they'll come up and they'll say... Console launch exclusive. Yeah. Which means it comes out a few months earlier on Xbox, and it's like they're trying to say that's yeah. an exclusive, and it's like, Phil Spencer, I know you're trying. Or then world exclusive or something. Or world, prem- world premiere. World premiere. Oh, no, never mind. World all, these, all these words try and dress it up and make it seem like the Xbox is something you need to have when you can get most of these games on PS4. But we're already just throwing stones at Microsoft, yeah, no so need, let's not no do need that. Yet. Let's get back into the... Um, well, I was going to say, in the Nintendo, I expressed that I'm just a casual gamer, that E3 has never been something that I paid a whole lot of attention to. I usually would find trailers of games that I felt like I would enjoy in the future after, like, ooh, E3 trailers are out mm-hmm. or whatever, but I never felt like, oh, I want to watch E3, I want to be experience this. But since I've gotten into, gotten on the gaming channel, uh, started pretty casual with gameplay, and then... Will has come to me with all these grand ideas of gaming and learning more about it. He brought me to the Easy Allies, which I assume we'll mention <laughs> in every video from yeah. now on. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so they've really uh, piqued my interest more into actually talking about these things. Um, and it so, makes me happy. Yeah, it's the first time that I've ever actually watched it. But again, it's one of those things where it sounded like from hearing people talk that it is not typically the case for Xbox to show as much and as, as, as mm-hmm. well as they did. Yeah, it was a pretty good showing. Um, the only exclusives I have written down that they have were Halo Infinite, which of we course. barely know what that is. Right. Um, Some seem to think it might be an open world Halo game. Yeah, I'm thinking it's something weird because of the reason it's because they've numbered them like they've they've numbered them all the way up to five, so it feels weird to drop the numbering now if it's like sure. a straight up Halo game. Um, then Gears Five, which I love that they they call it Gears Five. It's not Gears of War Five. Yeah. They just shortened the title to Gears Five, which I really like. And then Crackdown Three, which, which I played Crackdown Two, liked it. It's yeah. like a ridiculous... It's like GTA with double jumps, <laughs> yeah. basically. <laughs> but it also feels like one big, long mini game. There's no story to it. Yeah. It's just like, hey, welcome to the world. Kill these things, blow up these things, do mm-hmm. these things, then you're done. I can't say I'm super excited about it, but the reason, the fact that it's taken like almost 10 years at this point leads me to think there must be something there that's special. Also, so Terry Crews. Cruz. Terry Crews is... I'm pretty yeah, sure he's yeah, the yeah. actor for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. That is exciting. I'm going to get... X, you have Xbox Game Pass, don't you? I do. So you'll get Crackdown 3 day one. Thank goodness. Yep. I'll put it I on my PC. On yeah. That's another thing that's kind of like, the Xbox is just kind of useless now since they all come out on PC also. It's kind of like even like Gears of War comes out on PC, so it's mm-hmm. like, what well, are you guys doing? My playing of Gears of War 4 on there, even two years after its release, and it's still just a big old pile of hot garbage as far as oh, running man. on a PC. Yeah. So, Gotta I don't know if they idea, do that man. intentionally. But uh, let, let's be, let's try and be a little bit positive. Yeah, about I'm sorry. Like, that was that was a PC not positive. That's I'm not trying to jab Xbox. Yeah. I'm doing it as well, so let's... Let, I'm, they I'm a, showed a lot of games. They did show a lot of games. I'm about to get myself excited, Keith. Okay, well, I w- I'd like to comment, since we mentioned Gears 5 and we mentioned Halo Infinite. Halo Infinite looks cool. Haven't played a Halo game since Halo. The be first couple of missions of Halo Reach, okay. which is a long time ago. That was a long time ago. It's long, like 2010, I, I don't maybe? think I could drive. Maybe I could. I could drive in 2010, but what, yeah. whatever. Anyway, long time ago, this game. Uh, so... I'm not. I'm kind of out of the loop on Halo, is what I'm trying to say. So not much that, has changed. Yeah, that's not yeah. one that's blowing me away. Gears Five. I was really hoping for something that would be like this. Is we're. 
again, it's the whole gear, the whole God of War thing has got me yeah. kind of like biased for games. It's like okay, yeah. when a game has gotten this far into its life, like the last one was kind of meh. It wasn't like mm-hmm. it didn't blow me away as far yeah. as being a Gears of War game. Like maybe it's time for like maybe turn something to 11 on somewhere yeah and uh is i didn't i didn't see that in that one so. yeah they were kind of leaning into like the melodramatic story really hard too like a long cut scene of this lady just talking and i is kate yeah. i was kind of tuning kate out i mean i love you kate i'm sorry but uh i don't love you, <laughs> you i like her you didn't make me love you i'm That's sorry true. again we're totally agreeing negative on <laughs> i'm sorry yeah. Yeah. um but at the very end, after they had that melodramatic scene that was just boring me to tears, yeah. they had like really fast snippets of gameplay, mm-hmm. and it looked very fast-paced and frantic, and it looked kind of like it was in like a dark room. There was some kind of locust, like kind of like a wretch, kind of like jumping at her, yeah. and she had some interesting gun. It was giving me vibes of the first Gears of War, because the first Gears of War, I mean, it might be that I played it when I was like 11 or 12, but it kind of seemed like almost a survival horror game to me, mm-hmm. just because it was like really dark. You were always in these really dark areas, and there were these crazy like bat creatures and like yeah. wretches and like i don't know it's kind of have vibes of the first one i'm excited for gears 5 sure it looks pretty cool yep i'll definitely get it just because i played them all at this point and i just right. i love gears of war it's another one of those things where like we were talking about smash bros last week about how it's like pure kinetic video game joy i think gears of war is kind of that too yeah just uh feels good what's the word i'm looking for sorry folks my uh, my thesaurus and my brain isn't working right that's now. that's okay but uh um did any game before I go into some of mine? Were any other games really stand out to you? Like Ori and the Will of the Wisps? I know I saw you on Twitter. Yeah, stand. Pretty- yeah, uh, the trailer for Ori and the Will of the Wisps has uh, I or that the first game Ori and the, the Blind Forest has been on my Steam wish list for a while, and I always wanted to play it. And I was like, it might be a good game to play on the channel. But like, yeah, it's a couple of years old. Like people mm-hmm. probably won't watch. But then I always had to season that with. Most people won't watch anyway, no matter what it is. Hey, I'm um, watching that one. Yeah. I'm watching um, that one. I'm up to date on it. Yeah. Um, but it turned me on to that. I was like, I'm going to play that now. Yeah. It's better, and then, it was and, a good trailer. And then whenever I opened up the uh, opened up Steam and I was like, oh, this is on sale for like 50% off, you better believe oh, I'm nice. playing it. Awesome. Um, so I'm big. After playing just the first three hours of Ori and the Blind Forest, I'm big into Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Mm-hmm. Um, Tomb Raider looks fun. It does. I have not played any of the new reboots, but they're really good, but, Keith. Yeah, the two, but that that game, like just learning about it or whatever, mm-hmm. um, has kind of got me turned on to really what this show, this this press conference did was say, remind me, like, hey, you haven't played a lot of our stuff. Yeah, maybe you should go back and try it. Yeah. Um, so, and Rise yeah. of the Tomb Raider is on PS4 now. It was exactly. it was an Xbox console launch exclusive oh, yeah? for a while, but. Okay. Uh, now it's on. That was whenever I got my Xbox One for Christmas in like 2015. I was like, "What are some exclusives I can play on this that I couldn't?" Because right. I was already like having buyer's regret, or buyer's remorse of like, "I wish I got a PS4." Yeah. I was like, "But, but Rise of the Tomb Raider is an exclusive. I couldn't play that on PS4. I should go ahead and play that game, make it worth it for myself." Yeah. And I did. And I liked it a lot. I'm gonna get you excited for it, Keith, because okay. um, you like Zelda, don't you? I do. You like Twilight Princess. You like Uncharted. Sure. These new Tomb Raider games are a mixture of Uncharted and Zelda to me. And is that, it's if very she exciting. if she runs around with a bow and arrow, I'm in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love bows and arrows. I do love bows and arrows, too. I love them. And there's, like, a lot of puzzles in it. It's, like, kind of puzzly, like Zelda, like the sure. optional tombs you do. It's like being in a Zelda dungeon, but with, like, uncharted gameplay. Yeah. yeah. Love it. Love those games. Crossbow, keep it. Yeah. Real bow, give me. I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. What else? Do you have any that really stuck out to you? I'm there, there's there's a couple big ones that we're going to have to mention. Yeah. Um, I want to go into this one real quick, because I, I don't think this one would have stood out to you, Keith. Sure. The Awesome Adventures of Captain Spirit. I have not played Life is Strange. Never been to the Life is Strange universe. Um, be still my and, heart. And because of that, it didn't look like one that I'd be into. Yeah. Um, it's weird because they said it's coming out for free next week. Yeah. But I don't know if it's going to be one of those things where episode one is free and then they release four more episodes. Or if it's a standalone like lead into Life is Strange 2. I remember when they were watching it. And what they had said about it was that the wording was this: the whole experience of Captain Spirit is free. Okay. And it's not necessarily a prequel to Life is Strange, but it does take place in the Life is Strange universe. I imagine like one of the characters, and it has to be related to one of the characters from the first one probably or maybe something so. like that. But when I was watching it, I was actually thinking, oh man, maybe this is Life is Strange 2. Because mm. they said Life is Strange 2 is probably not going to have the same characters as the first one. It's going to be sure. like a different story sort of. So I was thinking maybe, this, maybe Life is Strange 2 just became... Captain Spirit, but now that I know it's a, now that I know that the whole thing is being released at once, that kind of tempers my expectations a little bit. Okay. But I still think I might cry because there was a thing. To, Life is Strange got me, 
And I think this one might get me too because there's a scene where the little kid's like, Dad, why are you drinking beer this early or something? Yeah. And he's like, don't lecture me, don't blah, blah, blah. And then they mentioned something about his mom being dead. And I yeah. was like, they're sowing the seeds of something that could tug at my heartstrings pretty well. Yeah. So I'm kind of excited for that, especially if the whole thing won't. Well, I, at first, I said that the whole thing being released at once kind of tempered my expectations, but now it kind of gets me more excited in a way because it's Binge like I'll, it. I'll know the whole thing within next week. Yeah. I'll download it for free. Binge it up. Mm-hmm. Um, so that one excites me. And I really do think you should uh, maybe put Life is Strange in your uh, sure. in your repertoire and your little get to it Maybe list. I should. Have you ever played the Walking Dead Telltale game? I played it for a little bit and I couldn't get into it you for couldn't? some reason. It was I don't I think maybe I was trying to record it for the channel or something. I could and I. It's something about it just didn't get me. Yeah. Maybe you wouldn't like it then. But there are more like, it's not, I mean, it is still like choose your own adventure sort of, but it's also got some gameplay in there of like bending time. Like there's mm-hmm. a lot of trial and error. Like if you say something to someone and the way they react, you don't like it, you can rewind time uh, and then okay. say something else to them. Cool. It's pretty cool. So that adds a little bit more flavor to it. But gotcha. I still think you should maybe check it out one of these days. I, ha- I have been interested in it, so I might do that. Yeah. It's good. It's like Stephen King-esque sort of. Okay. Like. Uh, little kids with, or they're not little kids, but I mean kids with magical powers, mm. evil adults. Uh. It's cool. It's cool. Um, let's see what else I got written down. I got Near Automata. It's coming to Xbox that. One, baby. Coming to Xbox One. That makes me happy. That was one of those things that I was really wanting to get a PS4 for it. But um, now tell well, me, is this the one with a very pale girl mm-hmm. with a very short skirt and a blindfold? Mm-hmm. And it's okay. all like, it's very like steampunkish looking like okay. a bunch of wet like, robots i don't i have no idea what the game's about yeah but i have heard that it's really good and from the gameplay that i saw at the xbox conference it looks kind of like old school god of war combat style sure. or like bayonetta style where it's just like or devil may cry just like those hack and slash games which i'm on board i've heard I it's love, got a really good story too i do love hack and slash but i just i get i'm, I'm kind of a hard out when it's like kind of this weird sexualized female character like you would not like Fire Emblem, Keith. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it's just, for some, that's just kind of hard outs me because it just, I don't know. I just, it, I, don't see, trashy. I don't see a benefit as a, as a, as a melee combatant to having, you know, like, your butt uncovered. Yeah. Like, it's not even like, oh, I'm a prude, don't show me that butt. It's yeah. more of just like, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. The same way I feel about like female armor that like has a midriff showing and like yeah. super. Cl- yeah, you would a, not like fire them. <laughs> it's just the same. It's like that doesn't it's like I'm the illusion broken. Yeah, because that doesn't make any sense. And it's like it kind of feels like they're trying to pander to you. It's like, oh, you're you're a middle or you're like a early twenties guy. You probably want to see some boobies, don't Check you? Check out these boobies. It's like, come on, I, I'm not that simple. <laughs> I bet you were afraid that in this game with female armor, we wouldn't show you boobies. But there's well, we boobies. Got them. We got boobies. <laughs> I used to kind of like be turned off by it too, just like that it seemed kind of trashy. Yeah. But I had um, Kyle Bossman, where once again, he's yeah. uh, Kyle Bossman used to have a show on game trailers that I still want you to check out at some point called The Final Bossman. Right. And he had an episode about Bayonetta. And he described it as like Bayonetta's sexualization and the way that she like, like all of her finishing moves, she like strikes really sexy poses and stuff. He was like, it's basically like a feminine version of teabagging. Yeah. <laughs> and that you like use your sexuality as like a power over someone, and just like rub it in kind of thing. Maybe so, so. I love Bayonetta, though. I would, I would love to imagine that being the case as to why they why make these characters there. that way. But I have yeah. to say that's definitely not true. Yeah, I, that's definitely a way to <laughs> rationalize it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like b- booby cell games, then I think that's really the case. Yeah, a lot of and the times. I think Fire Emblem Fates is the best-selling Fire Emblem game, and that's definitely the one with the most big boobies. <laughs> Lots, of, re- not that the boobies themselves are really big, but there's a lot of big boobies also. <laughs> So. I never expected when we turned on our E3 coverage of this this pro- conference that, that there were boobies would be said so much. Five times in about 20 seconds. <laughs> All right, let's leave that alone. Let's the, finish up Xbox because we're approaching that Folks at home, the tank dra- you've heard of the tank drank of the week. Yeah. No, we've no. Got, no, we're not doing that? Okay. No, no we're not. Okay. All right. <laughs> we're going to let um. the imagination run wild with that one. So near Automata, that might be something that gets me to crank up my Xbox One. Okay. I might have to play that. Cool. Well, I'm going to have to crank it up for Captain Spirit because I don't think Captain Spirit's coming to Switch, so mm. probably going to get it on my Xbox One. Cool. Um, next up, I've got written down Sekiro. Shadows Die Twice. That's cool. It does look cool. I've never played a From Software game. Never played a Dark Souls. They've always kind of intimidated me. Yeah, played a few. I've played like probably four or five hours of Dark Souls 2. Punishing experience. Yeah. It's just broke me. Yeah. It broke me down. Broke me hard. Just because I just. I don't have the 
and I think part like some people say, oh, it's it's really cool that they don't give you the story that you have to like dig for the story. Like you get the story through the context of where you are. Yeah. Like there's like there's no cut scenes or whatever. Really not big ones. Like maybe when you see a boss, there's a cut scene or something. Mm-hmm. But it's not like you are the hero to save or whatever. Like you find out your your role kind of based on the the context of what you do. Are there and like audio diaries or not audio diaries? Not, are there like the, things you, you have to find yeah, and read? You read them. You read them and like. I, I watched a guy play through Dark Souls 3, and like, if he was not telling me what was going on, like mm-hmm. what the context of what was happening, I would have no clue. Yeah. Uh, it would be a game where I walk through it and chop stuff. I'm not denying that they're really good. They're critically acclaimed games. Everybody likes them. They're definitely good games. It's just maybe not be might not be my thing, uh, and it is very hard. I've heard that Sekiro Shadows Die Twice is more difficult. More than, difficult? More difficult than Dark Souls and Bloodborne. Oh, no. Oh, no. So I'm worried about it. Also, what helps me, though, is that uh, Japanese culture, like the whole uh, samurai thing, has yeah. never been my bag. Mm-hmm. So it's not like, oh, I really want to play that, but I'm going to suck at it. It's like, I'd be content to watch somebody play that. Yeah, yeah. So not necessarily a game I'm going to play, but it looked cool. Very exciting to see people excited about it. Yeah, that's probably another thing that got it written down on here. Because they teased it at um, the Game Awards. I know you weren't really following gaming culture back right, then. Right, right, right. But at the Game Awards, there was like a really short teaser that just said Shadows Die Twice. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people were thinking... Bloodborne, yeah. twice. Bloodborne two, twice. Yeah. This, blah, blah, blah. but nope. It's I like the Shadows Die Twice as part of the title though. Sure, that's pretty cool. Um, next thing I got written down is a uh, Cyberpunk 2077. Yeah, and that's made by the Witcher people, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's made by C- CD Project Red. So you excited about that project one? with a K? Um, I like the Witcher. Uh, I'm trying to play more of it now. I never finished it, um, but it's one of those things where it's another like I never played and finished the Witcher. And I never got a vibe from it like this is a game changer or whatever. Maybe mm-hmm. I'm just my maybe my antenna wasn't up or whatever. I never got the idea that like oh this is like the people who made this whatever they make is gold. Yeah. Um. But that's the case. That's how people feel. And I I can trust them. I can tr- people who I trust trust them. So I can trust yeah. them too. Um. It the world looks crazy cool. We never got to see gameplay in any of the E3 stuff. Mm-hmm. People did. We didn't. Um, like people at E3 got to see some gameplay. We didn't get to see any gameplay. I would have liked to see that to have a full opinion of it. But even without it, I can trust the people that I trust who who have seen it and really liked it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's first person, so that's for. If, I assumed it wouldn't be, so that's kind of a bummer yeah, I didn't that know it, it goes first person for either. first person. Yes, yeah. it's a first person. It's not game. even like Skyrim style where you can change. Uh, not that I know of. They didn't mention that that's possible. <coughs> it may be hmm. possible later on. Um, yeah, I don't know, but. They said the gameplay was cool, but really what I've heard the most about about Cyberpunk is that um, it's the world that sells it. It's this, this actually, it feels like a truly living world that you're part of. Yeah, that's an exciting game. I'll yeah. have to keep my eyes on that mm-hmm. for more trailers, like whenever gameplay shows itself. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's one that's on my radar now. Right. Um, and then, but that's the end of Xbox, right? Or well, more? I had one written here, but we can just talk about it in Sony's because they showed the exact same trailer uh, <laughs> in Sony's. Kingdom Hearts? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we can talk about it there. So let's go ahead and transition because we've probably already gone a little bit longer. Yeah, we've we got about 10 minutes left before our big mm. limit, so we might be able to extend a little bit. We'll Maybe. See. I mean, I don't have a whole lot written down for Sony. Okay. So. Well, they had four big games. Mm-hmm. It's like four big time ones, Only right? Only two of which I had really written down. Yeah. So for the four big ones were Last of Us 2, Spider-Man, uh, Ghost of Tsushima, and the last one I always forget, but it is, what is it? Can't be Detroit Become Human because that game's already out. It's not. It is Death Stranding. How could yeah. we forget Death Stranding? Death Stranding. We're going to have to talk about yeah, that one. We are. Yeah, we I are. Think we, to I think we both, have, yeah. we both have hot takes on I that I got one. a hot take on that one. Um, so let's talk real quick Last of Us 2. Gameplay. How would you feel about it? We got to see Jeez. gameplay. I loved it. Oh, me too. I was blown away. Yeah, the game, all things considered, trailer, you can leave the trailer alone. I don't. The trailer was good, mm-hmm. but even just the gameplay, blown away. Yes, blown away. The just the first one had aspects of the two where just the AI is so good and reactive to everything that yeah. you're doing. But the person that they had play in the game, were, they, they they had the that cin- was so they must rehearsed. have gone to cinematography school so because rehearsed. the way that they were reco- like changing the angles and everything, the camera control, everything. But just like. The way watching it all play out, I was like, "There's got to be at least twenty other ways this could play out." Like, what if yeah. she goes to the right? What right. if? But it seems like it was practically was like you're watching a cutscene, basically, just because right. everything was so orchestrated. It was re- yeah, it was real gameplay, but 
crazy rehearsed. Yeah. Like that scene inside the um inside that store where like she's hiding and they're yeah. like you or I would not have played it that way. Yeah. We would have stood up and like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it would have been over. <laughs> um but the the cinematography of it all and then like if there's a moment where like a bag falls down and like arrows fall out of the bag or something there's something that didn't look quite like that is real in the game that is um that that is there's not a word for how amazing that so is. So arrows fell out and then she could pick up the arrows and use it them. It was like arrows like something tipped over, arrows maybe I'm wrong, I don't remember, but it was something where like I feel like some arrows tipped over or she there was an arrow stuck in a man or something and yeah. you hit grab the arrow and it actually had an animation of she like leaned down and pulled the arrow out. Uh-huh. Like maybe that's a model that they put in different places and that's a way they give you ammo Mm -hmm. but if like if you shoot an arrow at something and she no matter where it is she goes and picks it up or like if there's ammo on the ground like if a bag of arrows falls down and arrows roll out of it and she can like gather them all in like any instance that's crazy to me i believe it i think that's what they're going for I'm I'm all about it. Please yeah. please do it. It looks it's so just, good. It, 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 look, it looked amazing. It looks so good. I heard a lot of people like in in the comment section of um, all the trailers because you know various outlets upload it. Yeah. And there it was basically a war between Tumblr and 4chan in the comments mm. of people getting upset about Ellie kissing a girl. Yeah. And it's like I don't know if you played the DLC for the Last of Us Mm-mm. the first one, but there it's all it's like a backstory like a prequel of ellie and her friend that got killed that got zombified you remember that being a part of it like her friend that she grew up with and her and that little girl had kind of a thing they were clearly like kind of a little romantic couple she's always been gay yeah she's always been gay so it's not (laughs) like they turned her gay for the last of us two it's not like some tumblr knight got on started writing the last of us two and made her a lesbian like it's canonized and i loved how it uh like pulp fiction style like (laughs) cuts it's there and then shows one thing and then cuts back to that original scene Mm -hmm. and uh I love how it ends with the girl being like, "They should be terrified of you." After we yeah. see Ellie brutally murdering everyone, it was like, "Do you yeah, think I get to play as Joel?" I want to. Will call me sexist. I think you're gonna. I mean, call I me sexist, but it feels better to kill zombies as a grown man. It it feels better to kill grown men as a grown man to me. Yeah, I can believe that. Because at the end of the day, say what you will about like Ellie, she's late teens or whatever. Mm-hmm. She's. I don't. I, that's I my think, only she, I think in Last of Us 2, she's probably like my age. She's probably like our age, like 20s. Okay. I'm just saying my skepticism is that she might have been hitting the weight. She looks pretty She looks pretty thick. She looks pretty yeah. strong. But at a certain point, like, there's... I feel a like girl there's, versus, like, 20 grown men. It's kind of, yeah. like, a little bit more hard to believe. Yeah, and I, I, don't, buy that. I don't want people to look at me like I'm a sexist. But yeah. it's like, for some, for me, if... Maybe maybe I'm stuck in weird gender roles. I don't know. Maybe, but you know, I mean, we do live in South Carolina. So. Yeah. At the end of the day, I, f- I just I feel like I w- I, w- I want to play. Maybe I just want to know what's up with Joel. Maybe that's why I'm a yeah. little. I want to play. Yeah. Because if you ask me who my favorite character is and who's the more more interesting character, it's not Ellie. To me, yeah, it's Joel. It's Joel. It's Joel. Yeah. And but, but, be, I mean, they could make Ellie super interesting in this one. No, I'm not saying again. I'm yeah. saying if you, if I'm taking the first game, mm-hmm. if I'm taking the first game. Obviously, Joel is the character you play as, mm-hmm. but it's like he made interesting decisions. He had interesting motivations. I'm not His trashing. Final decision. Not yeah. I'm not trying to trash on The Last of Us too. Yeah. I'm I'm trying to temper my elate, elation yeah. at the gameplay with. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna try to really think about it. Keith, I'm just gonna go full speculation here. Um, what I see them doing is I feel like The Last of Us Two is gonna be. Kind of like, you know, in the first one, you play as Joel for the, mo- the most of it, and yeah. then there's that one part where you play as Ellie? Yeah. I think it might be a reverse. Opposite. Yeah. I think you might play as Ellie for a lot of it. Joel might be mentioned a lot, and then there will be some big moment where it's like, oh, this is what Joel's doing now, and you play as him. Or, People have speculated that he's the big, the leader of the where they're at. Like he's the the leader of... So apparently that one, the male in the in the trailer. Or yeah, something, he referred to like your big, old man was the getting big on boss me. or something. Yeah, or whatever. and he said he referred to him specifically as Ellie's old man. Oh yeah. And so yeah, it probably. He's, yeah, he's in there. He's yeah. got to be. I really want to know if Ellie knows. That, that's what I was about to say. What what Joel did? Yeah. I think she's got to because even at the end of the Last of Us one, it kind of seemed like she knew something was up. Yeah. Because like she, uh, whenever she wakes up in the car and Joel's like, "Oh yeah, they couldn't do it." You kind of see this look on her face, like, "I think this guy's full of crap." Yeah. <laughs> like, so that's what gonna be moment. really exciting. Just by knowing. far, best video game moment ever. Did you shoot the doctor? 
Um, I think maybe I did it both ways just to see. I shot, I I shot probably, all those doctors. I, oh no, the doctors that in the room. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, w- I went full. I went full <laughs> RP on yeah. that one. Yeah. I was like, "There's no way Joel doesn't shoot him." Yeah. <laughs> Dude, we are crushing this time on it. We got to talk about some more okay. games. Yeah. Well, um, Last of Us Two. Don't skip it. It's gonna be good. Don't skip it. It's gonna be fantastic. <laughs> um, next thing that got me probably even more excited. Spider Man. I w- I'm surprised to hear you say that. Really? Because I was gonna go wild on Spider Man. And wild as in I'm gonna say I really love it. But um, Keith, I love it. Spider Man is my favorite superhero of all time. Uh, same. Nice. He he left he left my 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 aim for a while with mm-hmm. the Andrew Garfield and like yeah. the, the end of the Spider Man like Spider Man three and stuff. Yeah. But I mean, Spider Man still he's, he's always been classic my formula, yeah. timeless, can't go wrong with it. Just seeing all the villains in the trailer, I was mm-hmm. like, yes, Rhino, yes, Scorpion, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> uh, who else? Uh, Vulture, Shocker, yes. Uh, Electro, yes. Vulture, yes. I was just so excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, a lot of people like love the Batman Arkham games. They're like, this is the like, if you made a Batman video game, this is it. Mm-hmm. And I feel like this is going to be my Arkham. Yeah. This is going to be the one where I'm just, like, over the moon excited. And there's but, nothing but good th- good things coming out about it. Mm-hmm. No and one's The gameplay looks it. so good. Yeah. Just the, the, Smooth. The, the, it wasn't a whole lot of web slinging that we saw, yeah. but we did see that one part where, like, there's an escalator, and he just webs it, pulls himself right uh-huh. to it, and, like, flies over it. And I was like, man, that looks Dude. so fun. Give me that controller. Yes. Like... I want to... There are a few games that I've spent where it's like open world I just want to explore mm-hmm. but Spider-Man 2 like I could when I was little I could just jump in Spider-Man 2 and be like you know I'm gonna swing for an hour yep. and I just swing I'd always go to the go to the top of the uh, Empire State Building like yes. jump off and right before you hit the ground you swing yes Keith yes <laughs> like, I love that and like you go how close can I get to the ground before I <laughs> or yeah or like you whenever you let go of the web for a little while he'd cut a backflip yeah or like you jump off or you, if you just ran straight off a building he would just mm-hmm. like instead of jumping he would just like fall Keith Spider-Man. if you think about how fun that was on the PlayStation 2 in 2004, and you think about the fact that we were in 2018 on the PlayStation have, 4. And I have superior hand and yes. action to coordination. Oh, man. I'm so excited. Who do you yeah. think was who do you think was teased at the end? Green Goblin, right? It's got to be Green Goblin. You think? I think, I think so. so. I think it's Green Goblin. Maybe Doc Ock, but I really feel like the Green Goblin is Spider-Man's Joker. Right. So they got to feel like it's probably him. I'm really excited to see what they do with him. You're going to take me back. Take me back to the first Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movie with Green Goblin. Take me back. I cried in the theater. I cried as a child in the theater because when Uncle Ben died, he looked like my granddad. Oh, I sobbed that's in awesome, the theater. Keith. That's awesome. I mean, not good sobs, but yeah. I have memories. I have memories of Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. I think, what's the first movie I cried at in the theater? I cried at Tarzan whenever the monkey got shot. Oh, yeah. We don't have to talk about Tarzan, though. Yeah, Kingdom Hearts 3, we are going to talk about that Yeah, in a we are going to talk about Kingdom Hearts 3. Um, is there anything else you want to say about Spider-Man? I, can't, I mean, all we're going to be doing is just... Man. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. <laughs> we, we can't keep doing that. Yeah. Um, um, last well, thing for Sony. Well, two more things for Sony. Uh, we got RE2 Go- remake. Uh, was that in that one for Sony? I think so. Yeah, it was Sony. Not a big deal for me. Never played Resident Evil. I have not either, but I have played the Resident Evil 1 remake. Loved it. Looks like Loved Resident Evil 7. So yeah, I mean Huber signed who yeah. Huber Huber seal of approval. I'm in. <laughs> yeah. so, um, this whole yeah. E3 could have been called like Huber reacting to. Yeah. We're all about easy allies. We love them. We act like they're our buddies. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully not, one of these days we'll do a collab podcast with them. Dude. Maybe. Died Maybe. and gone to heaven. Yep. <laughs> all right. Um Ghost of Tsushima came out in the Sony press conference. Again, I also go back to the the Japanese themes and motif have never been a real big deal for me. Yeah, that one did not stand out um, to me. So it looked really good. Yeah, it looks like a fantastic game. But, but it's not. something that I'll watch. Yeah. I'll watch on my plate. Kingdom oh, Hearts we had 3? Kingdom Hearts 3. Yeah, we're going to kill this time limit because we also have to talk about Death Stranding real fast. Correct. Too. And we got a hot take on Death Stranding. We might have to break this up into two videos. No, we got, no? This. Okay, we got this. We're good to go. All right. Um, let's just keep it brief on Kingdom, Kingdom Hearts because that's what they did. Yeah, let's just go. <laughs> yeah, they did. Showed the same trailer like three times. I love the theme song for it. Mm-hmm. My girl Utada Hikaru, or Utada whatever, whatever her name is. Simple My girl. And clean. <laughs> Simple and clean. Simple and clean. Is yeah. The, the way, yeah, I love it. And uh, Frozen. I love Frozen. I mean, I'm a simple man. Yeah. I go with the, the mass. I'm with the masses on that Let one. Go. Love it. Um, so I'm very excited about that. Yeah. All the worlds for Kingdom Hearts 3 just look. Like, I kind of got unexcited for Kingdom Hearts 3 just because it's taken so long to come out mm-hmm. that I was kind of giving up. But this, the E3 trailers brought me back, like, full on board. Like, that's a day one buy for me. Right. I'm getting it. Death Stranding. 
yeah, I, I'll say quickly about Kingdom Hearts 3 as well. Um, I'm excited because of Kingdom Hearts 3. What I've seen of it so far has not been like, that's Kingdom Hearts 3! The mech suits in the Toy Story have intrigued me. Yeah. That's cool. I'm excited for the different worlds that we don't know about yet, mm-hmm. but at the end of the day, nothing that they've shown me for Kingdom Hearts 3 has got me hyped, but knowing that Kingdom Hearts 3 is coming mm-hmm. gets me hyped. Toy Story and Monsters, Inc. got me mad hyped. Because they've is, never done a Pixar movie before. It is cool. You're right. That got me very excited. You're right. Yeah, Keith, I am right. I take it back. <laughs> um, let's talk about Death Stranding. Let's. I'm about to. You want to you you hit them with the Rick and Morty Chick-fil-A? I think we do. <laughs> yeah, let's, all right, I'm going to start with calm, and we're going to do it together. Calm down. down. About. Look, Wait, we're going to we'll, decide. We're, I, I want people to, do you want to say cool it or calm down? Cool it. All right, and then, cool it with Death Stranding. Please. Pump the brakes? Pump the brakes is even better. Pump the brakes. Are we going to do it together? Pump the brakes on Death Stranding. Okay. Please. Everyone. Pump Pump the the brakes on Death Death Stranding. Stranding, Please. Please Please. pump them. Just pump them. Just take your foot. (laughs) It looks weird. It's no. And it looks. This is what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that game, what we've seen so far, that is a bad Netflix original. That is not a video game. Yes. <laughs> yes. Bad Netflix original. That's like, uh, what is it? Um, the Cloverfield, the new Clo- Cloverfield Paradox. We, Cloverfield Paradox, the video game. We're we're removing ourselves from ever being able to do anything with Easy Allies yeah, now because they love it. <laughs> yeah. And I, I never really liked Metal Gear Solid all that much. I played I four. Played it. I played four. Did not play any of the other Me ones. Either. That was probably my mistake. Um, Because I had no idea what was going on. And they just seemed like very just weird for the sake of being weird, which is like kind of one of my pet peeves, which is a lot of what Death Stranding is doing. And I'm going to tell some I'm going to tell the folks at home to pump the brakes on this one too. pump the brakes on Norman Reedus. Agreed. What? Daryl is not that. okay. first of all, The Walking Dead is not a very good show. Second of all, (laughs) Daryl is not that cool. He's not that cool. Okay, it's a, like everyone loves him, but it's like he's just a guy with a beard and a crossbow and it's killing a, zombies. Like, let's okay. talk about the beard. It's not a good beard. It's not a good beard. It's patchy. He's yeah. a grown man. I can do this because I'm 23. I'm growing into it. But Daryl, <laughs> that man's 50 years old, and it looks and like just and he. What really bothers me is that he looks exactly like he does in The Walking Dead. They yeah. couldn't even tell him to cut his hair or just look different. It just Where looks like Daryl from The Walking Dead doing a bunch of weird stuff, wearing an astronaut suit, walking around. Where were you people? When um, Boondock Saints was he in that? Yeah, he was in that. I never. I don't see all you people comment about. Oh, the man from Boondock Saints. I don't. I don't remember. Boondock Saints is what we call a cult classic. Mm -hmm. It has a cult following. Not everyone in the whole wide world. So we ask you, please, if you don't mind, pump the brakes on Death Stranding because you don't know what it's about. Right now, it does. All it looks like is he's walking around. Uh, That's fine. It is weird, and that is another. That's pet peeve of mine. Don't be Mm -hmm. weird to be weird. Be and this Kojima a guy, I'm sure he's great. Yeah. I don't know much about Mr. Kojima, and I'm sure he's very talented. But can we calm down? Can we just can we just operate on the assumption that maybe, just maybe, this game's not going to be fantastic. Maybe it's yeah. not going to be a 10 out of 10. That's true. Just because it's got Kojima's name on it, we've got Daryl from The Walking Dead walking around in an astronaut suit, and babies, a lot of baby motifs going good, on. Good trailer? Sure, certainly. That's a well-made trailer. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day... You see that trailer on Netflix as the trailer for a Netflix original, you think probably skip it. You hard pass on that one. You probably you skip scroll it. to the right. You yeah. probably skip it. So but just I'm fully willing to whenever this game comes out in 2025, I'm willing to get in <laughs> yeah. front of the camera and say I was wrong. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm perfectly but, like right now, I don't get it. We're, I don't get it. We are going to be the men on the wall watching for change we're going to be we're going to be the we're going to be the criers in the street Mm -hmm. telling the telling the hopeless masses going into the vatican that where the where the bible is only in latin and is chained to the pulpit and they don't have a chance to read it we're going to be the criers we're going to be nailing the theses to the door my friend (laughs) 99 death stranding theses about how it ain't that great Shout outs to Martin Luther. <laughs> My boy, Martin Luther. Thanks for the Protestant Reformation. Yeah. And I also never knew when we started this video that I would be calling myself the Martin Luther of, of the, Death Stranding. Of Death Stranding. <laughs> All right. That's this a good was fun, Keith. Yeah, that's a good way to end this video. Yep. Um, to gas people just to pump the brakes just a little bit. Just a little bit. But like I said, me and Keith will get in front of this camera we and will. we will say we are wrong in 2030. Penance. I will I will cut my beard like Norman Reedus's. I'll grow out my hair long, real patchy. Hopefully by that by the time we ha- make that video, I will have a baby. 
and I'll bring my baby in a backpack. <laughs> And in front of this camera, in front of this camera, I will say, Mr. Kojima, I directly apologize. Your game was fantastic. It changed my life. The world is a better place because of it. Poverty has ended. And there's nothing. And The Rock is president. Yeah, The Rock is president. (laughs) Everything is fine. I'm sorry, Kojima. I'm sorry, Easy Allies. I'm sorry for everyone who knew this game would be good. Yeah. All right, folks, thanks for joining us. <laughs> yeah, thank you for joining us. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll have uh, one more E3 video, depending on when this comes out, maybe the last one, considering how good it was. Um, but we love you very much. <laughs> Take it easy.